the early 1970s, North American falconers began to explore a new horizon in American falconry, sage grouse hawking. Although first recorded by Lewis and Clark, ancient Indians had certainly been familiar with this grouse for unknown ages prior to its discovery by white men. Indian tribes were so impressed with the bird's abundance in parts of western Wyoming that they named a major river system in its honor. As late as 1840, the Green River was commonly called the Siskadiagi, or Prairie Hen River, an obvious reference to the sage grouse. Our largest species of native grouse, sage grouse inhabit the highland sage country of western North America. The sage grouse is best known for its spectacular courtship displays. In March and into May, male sage grouse assemble on their ancestral strutting grounds, known as lex, to reenact one of the most stirring and colorful pageants in nature. The lex are located in open areas or in very short sage. Sage grouse are highly polygamous, and a male will copulate with a number of females. One dominant boomer does most of the mating, and competition for this privilege is fierce. Male sage grouse begin strutting at first light, and activity ceases shortly after sunrise. Frequently, they strut again in the late evening, and on some moonlit nights, they perform all night. It is likely that these strict strutting hours have been developed to avoid the attacks by golden eagles, who generally do not hunt first and last hours of the day. During the winter months, sagebrush provides the primary food and is eaten exclusively. Here we see the crop contents of a female grouse taken in December. The west was settled to the detriment of the sage grouse. Today, there are no large metropolitan areas in the west that still have good numbers of sage grouse nearby. Falconers generally travel great distances to locate grouse. Sagebrush eradication programs have taken their toll on sage grouse habitat. Over the past 50 years, Four million hectares of sagebrush range have been treated by burning, spraying, chaining, plowing, and cutting in attempts to convert these ranges to grasslands. Sage grouse represent all that is wild and unchanged. Man has done nothing that benefits this species. They live in an environment that seems very hostile to most humans. Sage grouse habitat is truly pristine wilderness. It is a good feeling to arrive at grouse camp each fall. September is a good time to introduce a young falcon to sage grouse. The immature birds are still developing, and adult birds are molting and rebuilding their strength lost during the hot summer. They are quite easily taken this time of year. They don't become a difficult quarry until late November. To truly test the skills of a falcon, the only worthy grouse are taken after November has passed. To locate sage grouse, you need to look for signs. 
the most obvious being the telltale piles of intestinal droppings and black cecal droppings. In snow, look for tracks. Once you locate a hunting area, dogs are a must. English pointers and setters are the preferred breed. Some species of hunting dogs were originally bred for hunting with falcons before the invention of the gun. A typical hunt begins at first light in a four-wheel drive vehicle following fast-ranging, well-trained English pointers and setters. It is critical to run the dog into the wind, or it will bump the grouse, for the dogs locate the grouse by smell. Sage grouse prefer six to eight inches of cover, on flat areas and often on ridges. As fall turns to winter, grouse migrate to wintering areas, as snowfall replaces water for their moisture requirements. They are a gregarious species and prefer to be in flocks. Some flocks can be well over a thousand birds. Sage grouse will widely disperse over a wintering area during mild weather, but concentrate in areas with exposed sagebrush as snow depth increases. The short cover is an advantage for grouse. They can eat the sage leaves without jumping, and more importantly, they can spot any approaching danger. The cover is just high enough to conceal them when they crouch. Half the fun of sage grouse hawking is watching the dogs. When the dog gets sent, it will slow down and line up on the birds, ending with a solid point. The falconer then moves his vehicle a safe distance away so he can release his falcon without flushing the grouse. When the falcon reaches a high pitch above the falconer, he moves in and flushes the grouse. Once knocked to the ground, the grouse tries to lure down the falcon, sidestepping its attacker and leaving the falcon with nothing but sage as the grouse disappears over the distant hill. After a morning hunt, the falconers return to camp to weather the falcons. Weathering is time for the falcons to bathe, relax, and preen their feathers. After lunch, the dogs are anxious to go. Like sage grouse, 
Falconers, too, are aware of the ever-present danger of golden eagles. The safest time for hunting is early morning before the sun rises, and again, one half hour before sunset. With falconry, the experience is natural to both the prey and the predator. Sage grouse are used to dealing with predators. Many of the grouse taken by falcons are crippled or injured, for falcons, like all predators, select out the weakest from the flock. This grouse had somehow broken its leg, most likely from a fence strike. The lack of circulation had caused it to lose its toes. It would never have survived the winter. Sage grouse are powerful flyers. They have been seen by pilots flying over mountain ranges. Many of the flights by falcons on sage grouse end up in tail chases. These chases can go for several miles. Falcons learn that they can be successful capturing grouse if they can stay with the grouse until it finds cover. It is at this time that golden eagles kill many falcons. Falconry, the oldest field sport known to man, has come a long way. Today, modern radio transmitters allow the falconer to follow the falcon on these long chases. The falconer tries to get to the falcon as quickly as possible to protect it from eagles. Journal entry, November 4th, 1993. My beautiful white jerkin Waldo struck a boomer and chased it into the creek bottom, where he was killed by a golden eagle. He had the makings of a great grouse hawk. You must accept the risks of hunting in eagle territory. Respect the eagle and harbor no ill feelings, for you are the guest in its home.
rest stops are few and far between and have only the bare necessities. A dependable vehicle is a must. Always have extra clothing as well as food and water. And don't forget a shovel. Many an evening around the campfire have been shared with friends, eating a delicious dinner of sage grouse with all the trimmings, and listening to falconry tales from the past. To falconry and good friends. Indeed. And Jomo. And Jomo. The most spectacular <laughs> falcon in the world. After a good night's rest, it's off for another day of hawking. One method of studying grouse is by trapping adults and placing radio transmitters on them. The bright light blinds the grouse while they are quickly netted. This procedure gives data on their movements, but unfortunately has shown that the transmitter and harness is a hindrance that ultimately leads to death by predators. Power lines and barbed wire fences are deadly to sage grouse. Not only are grouse killed outright by hitting them, but wounds caused from fence strikes become infected, making them easy prey.
falconers can save many more grouse than they take by making fences more visible. Smashed aluminum cans can be wired to the top strand. Most falconers I know have a good supply. The unanimous opinion of the experts is that hunting is not the factor contributing to the decline of the sage grouse. Sage grouse populations fluctuate. In the early 1900s, they were decreasing rapidly in Wyoming and considered by some wildlife officers doomed to extinction. But by 1940, sage hens had made such a comeback that they were considered overpopulated in some areas of Wyoming. White-tailed and black-tailed jackrabbits, as well as cottontail rabbits, are the primary prey species for large predators in sage-grouse country. These rabbits are cyclic. As rabbit populations increase, so do predators. On springs following rabbit declines, predators turn to secondary prey, such as sage-grouse. It is in the spring and summer that sage-grouse suffer their greatest losses to predators. It is normal to experience declines in grouse populations following the crash of rabbit populations. It is interesting that these birds are at their best during the harsh winter months. They thrive in cold weather and suffer little predation at this time. The tersel jeer peregrine hybrid has shown to be a spectacular and efficient hunting bird. This Jeer Peregrine Tersel named Jomo has learned a successful method for capturing grouse. After knocking a grouse to the ground, he quickly remounts, keeping his eye on the grouse. Notice the two grouse that flush on the left. The Tersel ignores them, keeping his eye on the original grouse. When it flushes, he knocks it down once more and remounts again. On the third flush, he binds and finishes the grouse. In this sequence, Jomo has four stoops on the same grouse before the final blow is delivered.
dog gets its reward, gobbling up the tasty entrails. After every successful flight, a toast is made in respect to the grouse. This challenging competitor is one of the most difficult game birds to be captured by means of falconry. Only the finest falcons are able to accomplish this task. The winter sage grouse is North America's swiftest upland game bird and is deeply respected by the falconers who hunt them. Each time a tail chase occurs, a state of panic sets in, for golden eagles are always present in sage grouse country. The relationship in falconry between bird and man date back to antiquity. It is one of love and dedication. It is unlikely that we will ever completely understand this spectacular and unique grouse. We will continue, however, to make politically motivated decisions based on population fluctuations. These decisions will most likely have no impact on grouse populations. To help the Siskadee, we need to preserve its habitat and continue our efforts to understand the complex relationships that occur in nature.